These people will fight amongst themselves, they'll fight the police, they'll fight anybody, but they will always believe in their country. But whatever the reasons immediately behind these latest disturbances, the police for their part maintain that a petrol bomb factory was established there some time ago. I think a lot of these race, what I considered race problems, uh, are stirred up to a large extent by the far left and uh, the loony left. Um, it must be easier to manipulate people when they're on drugs. There's a lot of people in these, uh, all these areas seem to be sort of uh, full of drug users. I was horrified at the Labour conference that not one delegate said anything um, good about the police. They all damned the police. Criminals had used dismay and grief to burn, stone and then to kill. The ferocity of the attack was senseless beyond belief, he added. During the rioting, the Commissioner had deployed members of the Tactical Firearms Unit. I don't ever think it's a bad thing to have a strong personality leading a country. I think she has great feeling for the population of the country. And I think particularly perhaps as a woman, cares more for the people um, in the same way perhaps as the, as the Queen cares for the people. The Commissioner is convinced they can cope through traditional policing methods rather than by introducing CS gas and water cannon, despite the fact that they believe that political activists are determined to find another opportunity to strike again elsewhere. Guy Cheney, a commodity broker, claims to make in a good year half a million pounds with his partner, John Buckland. The, the October goes off the ball fairly soon, doesn't it? This afternoon in their city office, the hope is to sweeten the income by yeah. dealing in sugar. Well, David, we don't think so. Very well, you? Lovely holiday, yeah. John left you some at 60 and some at 3 double didn't he? Uh, can I'll cancel it, put it in at 60. OK. The ops are Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, New York slipping. Thank you very much. Much obliged, Peter. Yeah. Cheers. We're out on that bike, in fact. Well, it really doesn't matter anymore, does it? Uh, we have no intention of delivering oh. sugar. Is Peter there? We are merely trading yeah. a contract month, which is an obligation to deliver sugar at a given price on a given, uh, over a given period. We have no intention of Peter. actually ever making that delivery. Uh, buy five at 51.60. What are you cancelling? The buying. Buying at 60? Yeah. What are you putting back in at? Not going to run it. We're selling something we haven't got in anticipation of buying it back cheaper. Yeah. Thanks. And Thanks. Uh, right now, it looks like we're going to buy it back cheaper. This is going to go down. It's very choppy. It's choppy as hell. OK, see, it's running. Got no buying in at all? No. Right. Here we go. Look at it. Ee hee. They're cracking it. It's Playing around. It's twitchy. Twitchy. It looks like someone's buying. Someone's <clears> in there buying. Should be lower. Someone's buying. Yeah, it, on my chart, it looks like a piece of shit. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It looks, uh... Yes. John. Good to cancel. Do you want to take out anything on the bounce? Still yeah. on the bounce? I'll look at it. Yeah. Sorry? OK, cheers. Buy five. Because I'm sure where? Two? Could drop like a stone, JB. Yeah, I'd hang far on it. Look, it's 51, 20 at 20 off. I'd, I'd have to take that out. I really wouldn't. No, I'm going to. You know, it's up to you. I mean, no, yeah. I'm going to cover it. Uh, buy five at one, Peter. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, I'd run something. Okay, buy four then. Yeah, four at one. Thanks a lot. You think so? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. I think I'm not going to come fishing, guy. Quite honestly, because we're earning money and uh, three cent drops going to knock it. You watch now. It. I'm on a roll. I'm going to stay. No way, is there? Could end in about ten minutes. I know, but I'm going to stay. We can go fishing again. You go. I'll stay. Two days later, the market broke. John, no longer hot, but having made a few thousands profit, shut up shop and went fishing with Henry, Robert, and Guy. Something on the end, definitely having a crack at it. Definitely a bite on it, isn't it? 100%. You're doing something, Guy. Yeah, definitely a bite on it, definitely a bite. I'm just leaving it for a second. Just a minute. Bear with me a minute. I think I'll give it a strike. Oh, I give it a strike if you think there's something there. 
Strike and wine, strike and wine. It's big, aren't they, around here, Bill? Do you want another knife? Yeah, let's stick it the other way then. Cut the head off, don't you think? You can just split his spine there and he'll not do much damage. Don't put your fingers in his mouth still. Though. That's fine. That's fine. You probably have to your line now. Is it that long way down? Nah, it's well down his gut, I think. Nah, it's just here. Here it is. Yeah. I'll get my pliers. There are pliers up there then. Yeah. <sighs> Open up, dental treatment. <laughs> Dentist. <laughs> the oldest of the friends, John Buckland, claims his main interest is to make money. Robert Hutchinson, the only bachelor, supports an expensive lifestyle by private means and no job. Henry Carew, however, has unearned income and a high-powered job in the drinks trade. While Guy Cheney, tiring of life in the city, has secret hopes of becoming a best-selling author. Now we go back again. What have you got in there? Yeah. Your lighter. Oh, do you want a cigarette? Yeah, this stuff. You've got plenty of this. The number of people out of work has risen to the highest level ever recorded. The total unemployed and claiming benefit last month was 3,346,198. That's a rise of almost 106,000 on the August figure. Oh, my goodness! Oh, no! oh, Children's birthday party, seventh birthday party. It's also Christmas. Getting for me, it's Christmas. And, uh, and the company are playing around in the stock market, so, so things are quite busy. And I'm trying to get home for Rebecca's party, get settled down, in the hope that I can then actually attend it. <laughs> Away from your faces and. Rebecca's going to go away to school. Um, I think the normal age for girls to go away, if they do go away, is about 12. So when she reaches that age, I'll send her away to, to a boarding school to learn a little discipline. Uh, my wife agrees with the principle of sending Rebecca away, uh, but I think it's for the good of the child and not just for the good of the parents. And Benjamin, what age will you send him? Benjamin, I'll send away to school um, the, the normal age for a, pub, for a, for a boy to uh, prep school, which is appallingly young, it's seven or eight years old. I was sent away at that age. I don't think it did me any harm. Uh, in fact, I think it did me a lot of good. Um, it teaches you to learn to live with other, other boys and then as you grow older, other men and, and other people and learn some discipline. When, when your teacher says jump, you jump. Is there going to be the money around in the next few years for people to have private education? Um, we, I believe, as a country, are generating more wealth, more income, more money. Um, I think people who have the opportunity to work um, are able to earn, by working harder, more and more money and, and, and really increase their real standard of living. And for those people with jobs, I think, yes, there will be the money around. Now, that's a very simple, pat answer. It's not as simple as that. I'm, I'm not a politician, nor am I a head of industry yet. I hope to be one day. <laughs> the unemployed must, in many people's eyes, represent a threat to security, a threat to stability, a threat to law and order. But perhaps we should go and ask the unemployed what it is they would like to do, given a fact of life, that currently there are not jobs available. It was a party, it wasn't a dinner party, it was just a, a drinks party. A right weirdo, weirdo mob. I think it's quite fun actually. My brother's pub. I think, and she's very, very kinky. 
I lost a cuffling once, sir. I tell you. Which part of it? I'm not telling you. I'm not bloody sure that's where I lost it. <laughs> oh. I was looking for my umbrella at the time. <laughs> She's not ugly, really. She's about four foot eight tall. She weighs about 16 stone. She's into chains and whipping and things like that. And what a bloody collection. <laughs> right, you had the lot in there, the Marquis de Sard's apprentices. You had, they were all there. <laughs> they turn up, some of the lot, they turn up, you know, and they, all these men that pierce their nipples and all this sort of stuff, you know, <coughs> put tie pins through their tits. <laughs> you didn't want to go in the bedroom, you didn't know what the kit was there, you know, whip slashes. <laughs> like, a, like a peculiar leather factory. It's been a day of widespread violence in the coloured townships around Cape Town in South Africa. School children have been involved in street clashes with police following last night's killing of at least three youngsters in Athlone Township. They died when police, concealed in containers on the back of a truck, suddenly jumped out and opened fire during disturbances. Robert, how many clubs are you a member of? Uh, I'm a member of three main clubs. The RAC, which is very good for sports facilities, like squash, sauna, and of course this fantastic swimming pool. Uh, I remember Brooks's, it's very good for backgammon. And the turf club, which has an excellent snooker table. And also fantastic facilities during race meetings like Goodwood, uh, Royal Ascot Weed, and also very important at Cheltenham. Uh, I also use a couple of nightclubs, Annabelle's and Raffles. And my mum's got enough money to go off to a casino like Aspinall's or the Ritz. One of the main reasons for a club was to get away from the women. Um, unfortunately, most clubs have opened their doors to, to women, not all the time, and hopefully they can push them into an annex. Are we ready to begin? Uh, most clubs have a very strong vetting committee. I think some people might have slipped through, but on the whole, and not many outsiders have got in. If I saw Greenpeace going and lobbying in Irkutsk, then I'd say, fair enough, OK, you're right. More people get killed in Zimbabwe, I should, I should imagine, every six months than have done in the last ten years in South Africa. Shop vicar. Green, Greenpeace and everybody else didn't get bonkers about that. But it seems to me that it's all right for blacks to kill blacks. That's perfectly okay. They can just kill as many as they want. And nobody's going to say a word about it. And they can kill whites as well. That's also okay. But if a few policemen break up a riot and people get killed, which is not a good idea, then that's it. We condemn South Africa. I think it's a ludicrous situation. There's some crass hypocrites. Anthony Mycock, the man jailed for a crime which it now appears may never have been committed, has been told that he must stay in prison pending an appeal court review of his case. Mycock has served almost half of a five-year sentence for aggravated burglary of a flat in Manchester. Any minute now. Any minute. You see that word, Jay? I hope so. <laughs> <coughs> the punishment is made to fit the crime. Unfortunately, there seemed to be very little punishment today and it doesn't seem to be enforced anyway. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd. Rather like caning in schools, I believe discipline is very important. He will need discipline. He's anything like me, well, anyway. I, 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 I feel quite firmly on this. I think corporal punishment must be, sorry, capital punishment, must be reintroduced as a deterrent. It must be. I, I, I think it is very, very important that this deterrent always exists, the deterrent of discipline and punishment. But if you do something wrong, you don't get told, oh, well, it's psychological or it's all because of your background or all because of your surroundings. You have done something wrong. The rules are very simple. Thou shalt not kill. I mean, how many... I don't know the facts. I don't know how many miscarriages of justice, how many men have gone to the gallows that shouldn't have. I think very, very, very few. After all, the death sentence is only passed when one is as certain as one can be, and it's never, ever 100%, but let's say 95% is good enough for me. In fact, probably in most cases, 90% is good enough for me. And I, I think 
the other thing is, the, the argument is who will hang them? I, think, I can think of a dozen people straight away who volunteer uh, to hang half these people. I don't, as far as hanging, in fact, probably I might even do it myself. If pushed, yes, I think I would have no qualms about it whatsoever. And I think I genuinely feel if it ended up to be proven to be a mistake, well, it was a mistake. We all make mistakes in life. The bloody ambulance was there, the police were there. I was only set, I was seven points over the limit, my blood test said. So. It was entirely the crowd's fault. Jumped out in front of me, shouting, see Kyle. And I said, that's it. Tally ho, boys. Bang it, six o'clock. <laughs> God, just before she got off the pavement. They were very understanding. <laughs> she wasn't white, she wasn't English, so nobody really worried. <laughs> So anyway, uh, it, the, the police then wrote a letter and said that um, because the inconclusive uh, results of the blood test, they were not going to pursue the, the, the prosecution or something silly. So I bought myself a large drink and went for a drive. <laughs> I thought, thank God there's decent law still left in this country. One had been in doubt recently. Oh, that poor policeman got into trouble for shooting that Waldorf fellow. Anybody could make a mistake like that. It's easily done. That's a very good reason to put 22 bullets into him and then club him over the head. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff a hand grenade up his ass and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. What the pop star found was a town that's dying. While camped outside Timbuktu are tens of thousands of nomads who have roamed the desert for centuries. Now even they have been forced to give up their traditional way of life because of the drought to seek shelter and food in the south. A million people are still at risk in this isolated region, in particular the nomad children. Emergency feeding centers have been set up to provide one high-protein meal a day, but epidemics of meningitis and measles have already killed half the children under five. Some food aid is at last getting through to remote areas of Mali, but not enough to go round. Christopher Morris, BBC, Timbuktu. Can I have a crutch pad? Yeah, I guess. OK. This is all going to be for a lump of bottom, you know. Other way up, Robert. <laughs> it's not. It's the right way up. It's the, the wrong way up. Slip up. It's the wrong right. way up. Other way up, Robert, it is. I need to slip out. If it was a ski, it won't move off the bottom very easy, you think? Okay? Right. Unless it's spotted rock fish. It isn't, though. I changed to it because don't come so far with your rod each time. Take your clutch off of it. All right. Give a stick now. All life. It's pulling against me, but I mean it could be just hard. Right in your life, maybe just. It's it pulling like shit now, isn't it? It's not pulling any longer. Nope. What's happened? It's all gone, but. Eh? Oh, a lot's gone. Yeah. Swivel and all. Such is life. Might have been a 400 pound skate. <laughs> On the other hand, it might have just been a bit of rock. But there you go, moment of excitement. Just trying to work out. We just try, I can't think what it is why they I mean, unless there just are no bloody fish here. No. We've had one or two bits of bait taken Yeah, but you need to look as if there are no fish. I'm, I'm tempted to stay where we are tomorrow, on, off Dunnett Head. You just leave it there. With day. a big bait, fishing a big bait. Everything's set up perfectly with a trace. Just get anchored and stay there. Do we, any of us, know? Uh, probably I'm the quietest. They do their thing, I do mine. They're not friend friends. They're just, I don't know, passing acquaintanceships. I don't know, I think hurrah Henry's not the right word, but, uh, but there's, uh, well, and there's no jealousy or class consciousness if you like it's uh, it's an amiable friendship i mean i take the piss out of them all the time and they do it to me i think i'm streetwise i think the word is i've 
seen, done and taken in a lot which they don't take you at school. I'm not really worried about the country, actually. I'm worried about me. Mm. Have you got any more onion rings? Right. By any chance? Ah, oh, oh, yes. Onion rings. Do you have any HP sauce, have you? Yes, I'll get HP sauce. Do you like it? You've not got HP sauce on it, you? Yeah. Well, yes. you like Everything them? in this world has got its price. Right. No, you can't eat What about morals, though? And well, morals don't Netflix. come into it. I used to well, take should. cattle into they Nigeria. Should. Listen, we used to go in with Coca-Cola cans and plastic knives and forks. I could get more done by giving them a Coca-Cola can and a plastic knife and fork. This is before the oil. Thank you very much. Thank but if you gave them money. Yeah, you haven't got the vinegar, have you? See, the, the, the yeah. It's empty. It's not so You've got white. Sarsen's vinegar. Malt. Well, for Scotland, I think you're doing bloody well. Absolute rubbish. Yeah. Well, she's working all by herself. She's only got one bloody table to do, hasn't she? Oh, that's fabulous. Thanks You've never worked so hard for a table, have you? <laughs> there you are. What did I, I believe if you, if you want something, ask for it. The acceptance of mediocrity is no good to anybody. We're going to pay for it. Ask for it. We're going to pay for it. Demand it. But don't you think so? Do you think people accept? People just grow up to accept Mark II all the time. Well, I think a lot of people, friends of mine anyway, are somewhat concerned about the outcome of the next election. Most of the old statesman-like politicians in the Labour Party are quietly making way for some very aggressive young gentlemen who have some very left-wing views and they don't coincide with our views. And that's not to say that we are right-wing fascists. I think there is this fear. And I don't think just... Uh, just the city are concerned about what might happen as a result of this. I think the army might be a little bit concerned as well, the armed forces. I'm not a specialist in army manoeuvres, but I would not think it would take very much for a military unit to take control of London, to take control of the country, the government. It fires shrapnel sideways, and it will uh, fires a band about that wide of shrapnel for about you know, and, and anything within about twenty feet. That's why the gets her legs cut in half. Actually, I'd, I'd be very interested um, to have a job or, or to be involved in the active running of the country. I mean, I would be very interested to to be a member of Parliament. Crews have been in England, particularly in Devon, since about 1100. They're one of the oldest families, if not the oldest family, recorded. Um, been a few villains around. Banfield Moor Carew was perhaps the most notorious. Been some good chaps too. And then there was uh, the Admiral of the Fleet, who unfortunately had the Mary Rose go down underneath him. Uh, that wasn't too popular, but the family had been around a long time. The Englishman is quiet, he has a good sense of humour. An Englishman's home is his castle. Some Englishmen's castles are their homes. But it doesn't matter what the man's home is, the racial characteristics are the same. Just bloody nice people. And obviously, the opportunity to become um, a member of parliament, um, to be concerned with the country and the way it's run and the way it's managed, would be one I'd be delighted to, to have. Government is about teams. It's a team effort. It's like running a company. Um, the chairman and managing director, they know better than the shareholders what is required for that company. I think businessmen reflect accurately the rest of the population. I would make more money if I didn't work for a company of the type I do. I'd probably make more money if I came and worked as you two do in the city. Do you think so? I'm sure I would. Well, as Noel Card said, the English, the English, the English are best. So out with the English and down with the rest. I think that sums it up. I suppose at the top is the aristocracy. And you have an upper middle class, middle class and working class. But I suppose I see myself as the upper middle class. Uh, and I'm afraid to say I have dissipated a certain amount of my capital over my lifetime, um, which is rather a mistake. 
I remember going to a headhunter once, and having looked through my CV, he said, there's only one hope for you, and that's marry a rich woman. And uh, I'm afraid that's the case. I'm so unlike Henry and Guy, who are very strong, very tough, full of bullshit, uh, know how to put it across, excellent salesmen. Well, that's just not me. Work and myself do not get on well with each other. I pay a bit of backgammon, which uh, has treated me touch wood quite well over the years, but unfortunately that doesn't pay for all the expenses. Unfortunately the dice go wrong, so well, one can't expect to win all the time at backgammon. So how much you've done this week? Um, I think uh, I'll leave that figure undisclosed. <laughs> Is it hundreds or thousands? Uh, hundreds. Um, you're being honest, it's not thousands. No, no, it's not thousands, it's close. Close to the big G. How long will your capital last? Uh, I think a couple of years at least. So, um, but anyway, something might turn up before then. And therefore I think uh, as long as one can keep financially solvent and keep the flag flying, then uh, I much prefer to sort of leave the life I'm leading. Unless, of course, one has to be frankly responsible, get married and have children, which is uh, something that uh, I, have, well, I have considered once or twice, but fortunately I've been saved from that sort of doom and despondency. What's so awful about marriage? Well, I think it, uh, the responsibility is, is, is extremely high. I mean, you're not only looking after yourself, but I mean, there's only two good reasons for getting married. One is to have children, the other one is so that at least your wife can drive you home when you're drunk. Hey, come along, big boy, take more than that. Oh, there we go. Brook more? No, that's lovely. Hmm. Go on, but you can't finish it. No way. Here we are, boys. You want to do the rub? Robert, are you in charge of serving? Well, I'm trying to... Your IC kitchen. Where's the, uh, the mayo? Yeah, Henry. Henry, have you got the mayonnaise? Oh no, there it is. If Robert does the carving up, you'll get half a lobster. No, it's your half. Robert, there's bits in this wine. I think you're going to have to get up earlier tomorrow, Robert. Yes, quite frankly, I'm not impressed. Can you bring any napkins, Robert? Can you, I tell you what, would you mind doing my um, claws? You hit them with a bit of... Use the end of the knife like I did. Just use the end of the knife like that, bang it. Have got a hammer? You don't need a hammer. Mm. Fresh like this, it's got to be one of the best foods around. Just what the doctor ordered. You want, you want a Gannet Mark III, are you? Gannet Mark III. Wait for tea now, Robert. All right, so go ahead, Buck. Buck. Yeah. Anybody for a nicely chilled little vino? Eh? Did you only bring one bottle of wine? Luffy, what you must try and do is ignore the cameras rather than comment on them with every breath. <laughs> I would like to be able to pass on to my children um, what was passed on to me, financial assistance. I don't deny it, I was very fortunate. Um, I don't regard any money that I've inherited or any possessions which I've inherited as mine. I regard them as the families, and if one is fortunate enough to have inherited some money, then you have a, a duty to use that for the good of as many people as you possibly can, which doesn't mean sharing it out to everybody else in the population if that is not the way you believe it is best used. One thing you must let me know before you go is what you want to do next weekend. You can take a horse out hunting if you want, or this some shooting up at Barnstable. Come on, your man wants it. Undersized. Keep it. It's undersized, that one. Thank you. What's that story about that marvellous fellow who used to fart all the while, and every time he farted, he kicked the dog? <laughs> Here we have a rum on the track. I hate cats, I shoot cats. I shoot cats. Cat shoots are good fun. <laughs> They take a lot to kill a cat, you know. The vicar called me going through the called me going through the graveyard with a gun trying to shoot a cat. Love dogs and shoot cats. Look, the loyalty of a dog is absolutely fabulous. It's worth it's a weight and go.
Doesn't matter how many times you kick them, they'll still come back. They'll still come back, exactly. Dogs are more bloody useful than women. Well, most of the time. Bring him here. Bring him here. Dead. 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 Good boy. Thank you, Monty. See that? Look at that. Magic. Sheer magic. <laughs> Sheer magic, that is. Good boy. I won't have them tease you. I won't have them tease you like this. My experience once of shooting with some Spaniards was uh, a little frightening. Uh, and they shoot anything. Starlings, larks, you know, missile thrushes, the works. And quite frankly, as soon as... Uh, <laughs> As soon as anything gets a foot off the ground, they shoot it. I think uh, that can be said for most of the, the well, certainly the Italians, the, the French, and the Belgians, and the Spaniards, anyway. Come on, we're supposed to be fishing. Come on. I'm fitting, I'm not shooting a sitting bird. Do it, Pam. <laughs> Don't shoot the little ones, Henry. Just wound them. The Karoo technique. I was brought up that you ate everything you shot. In other words, that you only shot things that you were going to eat. I like doing whatever I do well. So, the enjoyment for me um, in, in the shooting of, say, a pheasant or a rabbit is to do it cleanly, quickly and efficiently. When I've done a good shot, when I have shot well, I get the sense of satisfaction of having done what I am doing well. Exactly the same sense of satisfaction as I get having driven my car well, having ridden a horse well, having done a piece of business well. I like to do things well. Come on, bloody come on! Oh dear, we missed. What a shame. Come on, let's have the Ida duck. Get the Ida duck up. There's an Ida. Ida's protected duck. Don't shoot it, for God's sake. Not on camera, anyway. <laughs> the pound closed down one and a half cents at one dollar forty two point one cents. And on the stock market, the figures from Shell provided the excuse to take profits on the long record breaking rise in the market. The one hundred share index was down ten point two at one thousand three hundred and eighty four point eight. Government stocks were down an eighth in short three eighths in the market. Wall Street not far ago. Oh, Rubbish! What the hell are you doing? Right there, Robert. Still there. Uh, One more try. Right. Okay. Still there. You've not hit this bloody thing yet. Final last effort. That's not working. Oh, piss off. Ah, you bastard. It's very sad that the discipline today doesn't seem to be uh, as strong as it used to be. 
all the children seem to run right, they abuse the teachers. I mean, Christ, if we did that, uh, you know, our life wouldn't be worth living, but it does, doesn't seem to exist today. I think the public school system is still a very excellent system. I mean, obviously, it is a privileged position. I will accept that. But it's better for some people to have it rather than to no, for nobody to have it. You know, let's, let's lead from the top rather than the bottom, as it were. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we've before you bugger the life raft on the radar. Yeah, you saw it. The Home Secretary, Mr Douglas Hurd, has praised the way the police dealt with the riots. He said they were right to ensure that the trouble was confined to the Broadwater Farm Estate. I believe that the operational judgments were right. The police concentrated on containing the area, on preventing the criminal mob spilling out of that particular housing estate and doing infinite damage elsewhere. My job now is to give full support to the police and to make sure that they have the men, the equipment and the right tactics to cope with this situation and I've set work in hand to help make sure that it 